Hey YouTube, it's going to be another Mega Meyer video. This video is dedicated to Mega Meyer because nine years ago, this day, she hung herself but hadn't died completely yet. But she hung herself with a belt in her closet and I just wanted to say that this is very sad and I don't, I wasn't really a guy who would cover suicide back like years ago, but now I do. I mean... I mean, I wasn't really into discussing that back, like, in 2011, 10, 11, or... I started in 2012, I think. I think I talked about... Megan... No, no. I didn't talk about Megan Meyer until this year. Even though I found out about Megan Meyer four years ago. I talked about... The first bullying video I ever did... And Suicide was on Amanda Todd, then I covered Phoebe Prince. I was going to cover Mega Meyer, but I lost the notebook. That was the only video I was going to do about Mega Meyer until I got, until it kind of got into my head one time, one night in April 25th, um, about six months ago. Yeah. So I got into this story about the subject about six months ago and I understood it because I actually have had the same thing happen to me. Megan was bullied at school. She was called a fat cow and an elephant and she would quit eating lunch apparently and and she uh got bullied for being overweight and all that and I would just say that and she was also bullied by a fake account by Lori Drew and Lori Drew Lori Drew is a pathetic bitch she deserves to get slapped in the face or chained up against a wall and someone should just come over and punch her I hope a girl would punch the living crap out of her because she's such a bitch. And I don't think this is funny, but Lori Drew deserves deserves to be chained up to a wall. And she said to the parents to give it a rest, which is completely disrespectful because it was your fault that they that their daughter killed themselves. Or killed herself. But you just seem to be... You seem to just be messed up. Um, let me see. brought you this story yesterday and here's a Megan Meyer video. But we first brought you this story yesterday and our email absolutely overflowed with messages from you wanting to know more. This is 13 year old Megan Meyer, a beautiful girl who struggled with her weight and her very beautiful. If I would have gone back in time I would have told her I'll be her big brother anytime she needs to talk to me she can. Depression. And then Megan met a friend on MySpace, a 16-year-old boy named Josh. She was elated until Josh started sending her cruel and disturbing messages, ultimately telling Megan the world would be better off without her. Megan went upstairs into her bedroom, and she hanged herself. I would just like to say to Megan, personally, the world would be a sadder place without you. After they buried and it is a sadder place without you. Megan, her parents learned there was no parents learned, and she hanged herself. After they buried Megan, her parents learned there was no Josh. Instead, it was the parents of another girl who Megan knew playing a sick prank on a vulnerable young girl. Joining us now for more is Megan's friend and neighbor, Blaine Buckles. Blaine tried to save Megan's life by performing CPR on her. Blaine, thanks so much for being here with uh, with us. Uh, uh, I know that this is such a disturbing story. Megan's 
uh, birthday. She would have turned 15 this month. It's a hard time. We spoke with her mother yesterday. This was a year after it would have happened because she was going to turn 14, but she was 13. She would have been 15. Just just before I mean, this month, it's a hard time. We uh, birthday. She would have turned 15 this month. It's a hard time. We spoke with her mother yesterday. Just just before we get into the legalities of it, let me ask you: What when you first learned that Megan uh, was in trouble? Who was it who knocked on your door? It was her little sister Allison. Uh, she came to the door, banging on it, screaming, and my mom went and answered, and she's screaming. Um, my mom needs you, my mom needs you, my sister's not breathing. And I was sitting down eating dinner, and well, I heard that, so I ran upstairs and I grabbed my lifeguard rescue pack and just ran down there. And I know you tried to save your friend, and you were able to get her, her heart beating again. Um, obviously, ultimately, Megan died, however. Yes, that's correct. She died the uh, next day in the hospital. And Blaine, you... Now, just so our viewers understand, the people behind this hoax, the fake Josh, were parents of another girl who was once a friend to Megan. We know the names of those cruel neighbors. We are not revealing it because... If you want to hear it, Lori Drew, Sarah Drew, Ashley Grills. Unlike those neighbors, we actually are going to have some compassion for their daughter, a compassion they did not have for Megan Meyer. So we don't want to mention their names, but you know who the family is. Describe your reaction when you found out it was adults, it was parents on your block. And you can tell this lady is pissed. If you don't think she's pissed, think again. You can hear how mad she is. The family is. Listen. Describe your reaction when you found out it was adults, it was parents on your block who were your and daughter. To this. A compassion they did not have for Megan Meyer. So we don't want to mention her voice is firm and sharp on this moment. Mention their names, but you know who the family is. Describe your reaction when you found out it was adults, it was parents on your block who were doing this to Megan. Well, not only were they adults, but they live right next door to us. And I was really angry, and I was told I couldn't do anything just to keep my mouth shut since they were going to try to go after them legally. So until now, I've had to keep my mouth shut. And I bet Blaine would have boiled and told them to go fuck themselves. If I would have been in that, if I would have been there, and if I could go back in time, I would knock on the door and say, Hi, Josh Evans, before this would have happened to Megan. And then I would have told him, delete the account, otherwise I'll report you to the cops before Megan would have killed herself. Not saying anything. Blaine, have you talked to them or to their daughter about what they did to Megan? No, they've tried to talk to my mom, and I don't. I act like they don't exist. I don't even look at them. This is Megan's gravesite, just for folks looking at the pictures uh, online. And now we're told, Blaine, by the, by the police... Uh, that, and this is in Missouri, that nothing could be done, that there, are, that there are no criminal charges that can be filed. Now, we had a debate yesterday that's still posted on foxnews.com with our lawyers disagreeing with that. But what your reaction to that statement, Blaine, that no criminal charges can be brought here? I was pretty mad, but then again, I guess you can change the laws so they won't happen in the future to other kids with problems. Like it was in O'Fallon, Missouri is where it happened. And I live in Washington. Like Megan had. And. It's like 29 hours to get to. To get there by a. By a car. And by a bus. No route found. And by walking. It'd be 642 hours. And by bicycling, it would be 173 hours. By walking for that, it would be... Almost 27 days, about, I think. Let me check that again. This one moves faster.
So about almost 27 days. Minus four hours. Let me see. It's almost 27. Six hours less of being 27 days. A bicycle would be 173 hours, so that from Washington would be. Almost eight days. Or less, 173 hours. So about close to 7, close to 8. So about 7. And by car, 29 hours. That's just over a day. I probably have rest stops there too. So, I mean, if there's any good we can get out of it, I think changing the laws would be the best. Playing without giving out the names of the neighbors who did this, what, what are they like? Apparently it was the mother of, of a friend of Megan who was really pushing this. What is she like? Uh, honestly, I didn't talk to her too much, but from what I did, she was real clingy. She, uh, you first meet her and she acted like she was your best friend. And so, I mean, Listen if there's any this. good we can get out of it, Listen to this. I think changing the laws would be the best. Playing without giving out the names of the neighbors who did this, what, what are they like? Apparently it was the mother of, of a friend of Megan who was really pushing this. What is she like? Uh, honestly, I didn't talk to her too much, but from what I did, she was real clingy. She, uh, you'd first meet her and she acted like she was your best friend. And, like, if you had company over and she'd come over, you try to like nicely say, okay, I have like company over, and she just wouldn't leave, wouldn't leave you alone. Yeah, and and her daughter has her daughter, that woman's daughter, has she shown any remorse for this whole thing? No, no none of them have shown remorse. I haven't even seen a tear. Actually, I think now. I think now it says, Lori Drew's daughter stayed daughter. Lori Drew's daughter is devastated by friend's suicide but doesn't feel responsible even though she did type stuff. And it says this the 16 year old daughter of woman on trial in the MySpace suicide case broke into tears Friday in a hushed courtroom as she testified a teen girl who committed suicide in 2006 after being bullied online and I think she told I think she told Sarah that she wanted to kill herself and she said after being bullied online and I told her twice that she wanted to kill herself she said she said she told no one about the time of her help friends cries for help Sarah Drew, daughter of defendant Lori Drew, is alleged. She knew that Megan was fragile and might commit suicide. I was in the tears, I couldn't believe it. When they discovered shortly after, then after Megan hanged herself, Drew said, I was in tears, I couldn't believe it. Maybe it's not Megan, or maybe it's not Lori who feels bad, but, looks, but by the looks of it, um, Megan called Sarah a lesbian, I think, and they got into a bickering fight or something. First, in, in fourth grade, they were best friends. They would sleep over at each other's houses. In fifth grade, they were still friends. In sixth grade, and in seventh grade, they would break off their friendship, reconnect, break off again, reconnect, break off again, reconnect, break off. 
and reconnect over and over and then that finally snapped. Wow, this is, um, this is such a disturbing case, Blaine, and I know that you and others are working to have a law change so that charges can result when someone abuses a girl like this online. We appreciate you being here. Good for you for trying to save your friend, but our condolences on the loss of her. Thank you. Thanks so much, Blaine. Well, Missouri lawmakers may take action now in the wake of this MySpace hoax. That part of this story tomorrow here on America's Newsroom. Plus, all of our reporting on this story is on foxnews.com right now. Just click on the America's Newsroom page and you'll see it all. And just so our, our viewers understand, Bill, the reason these parents, these neighbor parents, did this to Megan Meyer was, according to Megan's mother, who we talked to yesterday, because they wanted to get information from Megan. They thought Megan was talking about their daughter, and so they con concocted this hoax by which they try to gain her confidence and lure information out of her, and then they just turned it to the, to the cruelest of messages to this young, vulnerable girl who had a history of depression, and they knew it. Online bullies pay attention to what people are hearing and how they're reacting. Strong, strong lesson from this story. Yeah. 37 minutes past the hour. There's something I want to say about this. If you bully someone and they kill themselves, you're going to have to live with that guilt for the rest of your fucking life. And about the people who bullied Megan, I hope you guys rot in fucking hell. And then there's something else. Um, if you bully someone and they kill themselves, you're going to have to be taken to blame. Or if, if you bully someone and then they come to your land and or if you come to their house and tell them I, I've heard this story before this has happened and it's not a good thing if you bully someone they might end up trying to shoot you and don't say I didn't warn you if that happens I didn't say I would do that but that has happened before that people have been bullied and then they've shot the bullies but shooting a bully isn't going to solve the problem here's another thing NBC News in depth tonight an internet hoax and its terrible consequences. The parents of a teenage girl. November 19, 2007, a year after it happened. Who took her own life in a St. Louis suburb are now going public with her story as a cautionary tale for other parents. Here's NBC's George Lewis. Megan had asked if she could have a MySpace um, for her 14th birthday. When Megan Meyer joined the 70 She's beautiful. million users of the popular online hangout, MySpace.com, her parents said they took precautions, insisting that Megan only use the computer under their supervision. We were protecting her as much as possible. There was nothing that could have harmed her, is what we felt. Then, Megan, who had struggled with weight problems and depression, met someone online. He said his name was Josh Evans. He was 16 and attracted to her. To her, it was like, whoa, you know, had never experienced that. I think he said he plays the guitars and the drum. I'd love to see how good of a drummer he is because my friend, my uh, one of my co-workers um, who works for the same company I do, we work for the same uh, job and we work in the same building and we work at the, for this, we work for the same company and in the same building and we work at the same Costco where we give out the samples, so... He's a drummer, and he can drum. He's a great drummer. He has. He's in a band. But a year ago, Josh abruptly experienced this. But a year ago, Josh abruptly had never experienced this. To her, it was like, whoa, you know, had never experienced this. But a year ago, Josh abruptly turned on Megan. Megan received an email from Josh stating, I don't know if I want to be friends with you any longer because I heard you're not a very nice friend. Then, Megan began receiving insulting messages from other people. Bulletins went out calling her name, saying Megan's fat. She just said that everybody's being mean to me. I don't understand it, why they're saying these horrible things about me. I just told her, it'll be okay, Meg. But it wasn't okay. 20 minutes later, in Megan's bedroom, Tina screamed when she discovered her daughter had hung herself. It said, we love you. Meg Bell, Meg something. Hold on a minute. I don't know if you can see that clearly. I know my camera is on right now. We'd love you, Meg Bell, Meg. Drop 
stopped what I was doing and ran up there as fast as I could. And, uh, and that's when she was uh, hung, hanged in the uh, closet. Some months later, another shock. The Myers discovered there was no boy named Josh, that it was all a hoax. A neighbor tipped them that the whole thing was cooked up by the parents of one of Megan's former girlfriends. The idea to see if Megan was saying nasty things about their daughter online. I feel that they were, they led to her taking her life. Despicable, um, disgusting. There's not enough uh, horrible words to describe it. The family that invented Josh lives just down the street from the Myers. There's a question whether they broke a new federal law prohibiting internet harassment. <coughs> this was done just to hurt a child. And when adults act like children, this was done just to hurt a child. And when adults act like children, we need to treat them like criminals. Now, Megan's mom and dad hope to warn other parents so that they don't have to go through the same heartbreaking experience. George Lewis, NBC News, Los Angeles. And if that's not sad enough, Megan had a sister, and that makes it even harder, because Allison loved Megan. In the Web of Lies video that I filmed, Allison was crying because she said she remembered walking upstairs and seeing her sister, and she had tears in her eyes the whole time. Here's another video. Fire who is 13 years old. CNN now. That is Megan Meyer, who at 13 years old killed herself after someone she met on her MySpace page turned against her. Megan thought she was talking to a 16 year old boy, a boy who liked her. As we know, the boy never existed. He was created by a neighbor, a woman, a mother, who wanted to find out why Megan and her daughter were fighting. Tina Meyer is the mother of Megan. She joins me now from St. Louis. Tina, I'm so sorry for your loss. What Thank you. What went through your mind when you heard the prosecutor say there would be no criminal charges filed? Well, I met with him on Friday, and we went over this for three hours. And, you know, when I first spoke with him, I was extremely angry and disappointed and I certainly couldn't understand why why there could not be criminal charges when I felt that what she had done was absolutely criminal and once we went through the statutes line by line and what he had to work with unfortunately again there just is not the law just does not work with what has happened when you look at the intent and when you look at what he has to work with unfortunately it's not there but and, I'm sorry. And, and now there seems to be some, I mean, th this mother uh, uh, who, I mean, what is going through her mind or what was going through her mind, I, I can't even begin to understand. But she apparently hired somebody, an 18-year-old girl, to set up this page. And I guess her own daughter contributed to this page as well. Who do you hold responsible? I absolutely hold the mother responsible and the father. The father knew what was going on also. And, you know, the father should have told Lori Drew not to do that. You know, in the beginning, we've always known that the mother probably was not the one who actually typed the MySpace. She had no idea how to do this. And so we've always known that it was probably the 18-year-old employee and the 13-year-old daughter who physically typed it. And those two? Those two can suck it. And she was probably the one who sat there and, you know, knew what was going on. Bottom line is, she was the adult. She knew my daughter and had known us for years, knew that she was on medication. If you're an adult and you're allowing this to go on, oh, and had known us for years, knew that she was on medication. If you're an adult... Megan's beautiful, much beautifuler than Ashley. Much beautiful, much... The, 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 much more beautiful than that, than that ugly, ugly Ashley Grills. Lori Drew... And Sarah Drew. Yeah. Boom. And you're allowing this to go on. She stated that she also stood behind her daughter when she typed messages to my daughter. If you're going to allow that to go on, you absolutely should be charged with criminal charges. We can't know what the outcome of things are. To say that she did not intentionally think that my daughter was going to commit suicide. I agree with that. I don't think they went into this deciding, 
you know what, your daughter's going to commit suicide and that's what we want to do. I think that they intentionally made this MySpace account. I think that it was one of those things. She wanted to see if my daughter was talking about her daughter. But you're playing with a child. It's, it's completely reckless. I mean, there's no, there's, there's no doubt about it. Absolutely. What, what do you... I mean, where do you go now? I mean, there, are, do, do, you, do, you, uh, do you try to go after them civilly? What, what, what is the next step? Well, we certainly haven't closed any doors um, as far as a civil suit. But, you know, my biggest thing is, regardless, I don't feel this is a defeat. To me, um, it is one step further that we're going to go. We have to work with lawmakers. And the Internet has moved so quickly, and the laws have not. We have got to work with lawmakers to get the laws in place to work with what the internet has. This is not going to be anything that's going to stop anytime soon. And you want schools to address this issue too? Oh, absolutely. We've got to get into the schools. We've got to address cyberbullying with the children, with parents, with educators. Do people we take bullying seriously enough, especially cyberbullying? Oh, absolutely not. The children are cyberbullied all day long. It's not just in school where we used to get bullied. Now it's in school, you go home, you get cyberbullied there, and it goes out to hundreds and hundreds of kids. And children, there's no stopping point. So we have to address it absolutely. I just want to say, rest in peace, Megan. Today was the day you hung yourself. Tomorrow will be nine years after you, uh, after you died. But um, you live on. You're not dead. If you all say Megan's dead, that's not true. There's no such thing as death, and she's she's still with us. Even the people who didn't know but wanted to meet her, you're in our hearts, Megan. That's where you belong, in hearts and in heaven. But you're still alive. There's no such thing as death. Jesus said there's no such thing as death. Megan's still alive and still with us. The flesh doesn't die. Your body dies, but you live on. I right, thank you all for watching. Bye right, bye. Peace. And by the way, I'm sorry for Megan's family, Ron, Tina. <clears throat> sorry for Allison and Blaine Buckles. Um, and I'm also sorry for was behind this. Ron and Tina head home, barely. The weather ever felt flies. my entire life. Whether or not. Does he read it? Watching our kids learn how to ride bikes and. She and her family can blend into this close knit community. Anything to do with you? A year and a half ago, Sarah's mom, Lori, moved her family to Waterford Crystal. Dr she was always hanging out with people and she got. <laughs> Just had to tell people I'm busy I'm in the middle of the video. Um, I don't know. That's basically my little sisters. Well, let's go. They grew up together. I'm sad. Ago, Sarah's mom, Lori, moved her family to Waterford Crystal Drive because it seems like the perfect place to raise children. We were very close knit. We all had. I'm sorry for Christine, Christine Buckles, Blaine Buckles, Allison, Tina, and Ron Meyer. And here's the last thing I, I wanted. Horrible feeling. And here's what. Then it was getting late, and I said. Megan looked at me and she's like, Mom, what do you think that's about? It says I don't want to be friends with you anymore. I heard you're not a nice person. Or I heard you're not very nice Josh. friends. And suddenly her world begins to fall apart. As she signed on that evening, she had a message from Josh. I don't want to be friends with you anymore. You're not a nice person. Mom? Yeah? Look at this. Megan looked at me and she's like, Mom, what do you think that's about? And I said, Honey, I have no clue. He's probably just having a bad day. Don't worry about it. So she responded back and said, Where'd you get this from? There was no response. She sent it again. Still no response. Come on, let's go upstairs. Then it was getting late and I said, Meg, you need to sign off. 
night, Megan has a hard time shaking off Josh's rejection. I don't get it. Don't worry, hon, it's nothing. Really. I was worried because of the past bullying. It was a constant, you know, up and down because of the depression and ADD. So it certainly, I was going to... I actually want to say something, judging to this video I'm making for Megan. You want to know the sad thing? The day she hung herself, she had a perfect day. Everyone was going to come to her birthday party. They were all excited. Megan had a great day, and then she hung herself hours later. Megan, rest in peace. If I, w if I wouldn't have known you, here's just a, a hug for you. You're resting in heaven. You're beautiful. I stay up to date and subscribe, everyone. Alright, bye. Peace. Rest in peace, Megan.